Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 108 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just playing with my uh, nifty little Lua code here. As you can see, I've just added a command to my code to not only uh, put some commas into the numbers to make the values look readable, uh, but also to show you the change value of... Um, information here. So it looks like it's not working with the negatives. It looks like it worked with the positive on the change. I'll have to tweak that a little bit and fix it. But long story short, I want to keep track of the change over time. In other words, how much energy over a period of five seconds is gained or lost. And as you can see, um, it's every tenth of a second here. And then once it hits five, it resets itself. And then it displays the new number on the change line. So the main reason I'm doing this is I want to easily be able to tell once I hook up my nuclear reactor, how much more energy we're getting. So right now, over a period of time, we're getting a change of about between negative 15,000 and negative 20,000. Or in other words, we're losing 15 to 20,000 RF every five seconds or so. So it's really close. Like the amount of energy we're using is super close to the amount of energy producing, uh, considering that like, you know, these guys produce as much energy as they do. Um, obviously my heated redstone generators are not on. They're kind of like an emergency power, kind of flip the lever and let tons of energy flow in. So what would happen, for example, um, if I took this and cut off the bottom line so they can't receive energy from the steam dynamos anymore, you'll notice that the change significantly uh, increases. So now we're losing 341,000 RF per tick, uh, or, you know, every five seconds, and there was 171,000. So huge, huge change when we turn off uh, the steam dynamos here. And if we uh, flip this guy back to blue, letting the power flow out of the steam dynamos back into the energy cell, you'll see that now we all of a sudden gained 167,000 RF uh, over that period of time. But then once all the, the surplus energy that had built up inside these little batteries here gets cleared out, that change number drops back and starts to be a negative again. So nifty little set of code here that I did real real simple and terribly written and not very good at all but I just wanted to put that in there so that once we go ahead and uh, see that um, we can see the change that occurs once we hook up our nuclear reactor and see how well this thing works. So that is the plan for today. We're going to get the nuclear reactor running again. So I've got this awesome suit on. Let's go see what's up. So downstairs in nuclear reactor world, we can come over here and see that we currently have a good amount of EU stored. 16 million. Not bad. I like it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start, you know, playing around with getting that going. We're going to hook that into our RF feed, and then we should wind up having a decent amount of energy going in. And like I said, I might wind up uh, rearranging the reactor design in here at some point so that it generates even more RF per tick. Right now, like I said, I went for a very efficient design, but I'll probably look into uh, swapping to a slightly different design in a bit. But there is kind of a reason that I went for that, and you'll see what that is all about in just a bit. So I'll be back in a minute. Let me fix my lack of comma on the negative thing and be right back. All right, guys, now that I've gone ahead and fixed that negative number issue, we should be seeing some commas here in a minute with the negative number involved. Hooray! Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is run upstairs and make the gadget that's going to convert EU into RF. It's actually a somewhat new and I think a particular part from a mod, uh, a part that I've never used before. So I'm excited to check it out. This is from, drumroll please, Mine Factory Reloaded. That's right, Mine Factory Reloaded has recently done a lot of work to get itself working with RF uh, instead of Buildcraft Energy, which, you know, as we know, they're kind of the same. So what we can do is actually they added their own type of energy transmission cable because, you know, not everybody has, you know, the mod installed, uh, RF and thermal expansion, all that stuff. So they decided to add their own energy cable so that when people are playing Mine Factory Reloaded without thermal expansion installed, they can still access stuff. So as a result, we've now got this nifty energy cable. This stuff, RedNet energy cable. So it's basically an upgrade to RedNet cabling, which requires a decent amount of redstone and electrum. Okay, so you'll get, as you can see, good amount of RedNet energy cables from these guys. Uh, so we're obviously going to need some more RedNet cables here. Looks like we're gonna need some more plastic sheets here. And then we can get ourselves just a handful of these RedNet energy cables, which is exactly what I'm gonna work on right now. There we go. Red and energy cables are always good to have a handful of anyway. And I could probably request some Electrum. Let's go with like 20 of them. Should be real easy to request. And over here, they should be cooking up right there. Nice. 
Hooray! Now if we take a look, we should be able to now make a few of these red net energy cables. So here's the deal. Uh, if we look at um, energy cables, you'll note that um, in thermal expansion, leadstone, 80 RF per tick. Hardened, 400 RF per tick. Redstone, 10,000 RF per tick. So how much can red net energy cable store and transfer? It's somewhere between hardened and redstone, and it's actually right about 1,000 RF per tick. So the limit on red net energy cable, 1,000 RF per tick, you can't transmit any more than that. Uh, but what is cool about this stuff is, let's see if I'll be able to demonstrate this. When we place it down, um, you'll actually note that there is a nifty little power gauge here, or a color here, and you can change the color. So you can actually have several lines of energy transmission along the same red net energy cable as you can have, um, you know, the different redstone signals down the energy cable. So we can actually, I think it's 1000 per line. So it gets a little bit crazy, but I think I have some ideas on how this will work. So basically 1000 RF per tick is what's allowed to be transmitted through our red net energy cable, which is a decent amount of RF, honestly. Uh, now, how do we convert and how does that translate into EU? So the transmission ratio is four RF per one EU, or in other words, 1000 RF equals 250 EU per tick, which check this out. This guy's making just a little bit more than that. It's making 280. So that's the reason I went with this super efficient nuclear reactor because it has a decent output rate, but also it's not outputting that much more energy than our retinet energy cable can handle. So our MFSU here's job is going to be to convert uh, or, or to store the energy in the middle. Now the other thing I mentioned, I actually haven't tried connecting these cables to these cables before. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, we're going to try it and see what happens. Um, but if not, we can absolutely connect it directly to the MFSU by sticking it on the block itself. Now I did try in a single player world to plug it directly onto the nuclear reactor and stick it like right on the side of the nuclear reactor there. Didn't work. So I don't know why. It might be, you know, the IC2 API has changed or some craziness like that. But it does work if we plug it into uh, the nuclear reactor. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to request a couple P2P power cable conduit thingies. Uh, give me a few more of these just, you know, because uh, this guy is pre-configured as an EU tunnel. That's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm going to reconfigure it in a minute. And we might as well get some cabling. Let's go, buddy. What's taking so long? Get to the crafting. There we go. So I'm going to do the cable thing, and we're going to do IC2 power so that we can run this thing through. So let's see. And if this doesn't work, then we'll come up with something else. Um, I don't know if the cabling will work. We're going to find out. Let's see. What Do we have any... Mm, we have this stuff. It's not the greatest. I'm probably going to remove this line because um, that was more of a testing to see if um, it was the power line or the P2P conduit. Yeah. What's up, dude? Uh, so, let's see. Um... Kind of want to see, but I'm going to need more red net energy cable to test that. I'm not sure how this will work out, but I guess I'll run the cabling. That'll probably be my best bet. Is this necessary right here? It is not. This thing is going to go away in a minute. Let's get this under here. And we're going to plug this guy directly like this. You ready? We're going to have more fiber cable if I can. Oh wow, I made a lot of that stuff, huh? Nice. We'll rotate this thing so that he's facing the right way. We're going to set the memory bus like that so that settings are saved. 
will go up here where our power line feeds in uh, to this guy. So we have power lines feeding in in two locations. From the top goes input and from the side that's facing those things. So I'm thinking the best way to plug in here will probably be back here. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to test this and see. So where's some... Um, there it is. Redstone energy conduits. So it's the yellow network, by the way, that this plugs into. So we can really plug in wherever we want. No, it's the green network, I'm sorry. The green network is the main network. The yellow one's the bees, that's right. So let's do this. And then we'll put this guy here. And if this doesn't connect directly to the system, we'll come up with a solution for it, don't worry. But long story short, glass fiber cabling can be there. We can load the memory settings, which allows it to connect. And then we can just plug in a RedNet energy cable, hopefully, in between these guys. And now we go inside and we see what kind of power changes are occurring. So ideally, energy is flowing out of the MFSU and into here, and we have a net energy gain over a period of time. I'm not sure if this will work, but we're going to find out. Ooh, that's dropping, so it's less of an issue. 14, 18, uh, maybe that's not working. I wasn't really sure if that would work directly like that. I mean, another good test would be, are we losing energy from our MFSU? If it's draining out of here, it's really not. So that's a good indication that this is not working. So what we'll do instead then is... We'll grab some of this stuff. Well, this? No, I need the energy pipes. Where is that stuff? Wooden kinesis pipe, that'll do. We will load the settings onto this guy. That should connect and be good, maybe. And then up here, we'll see if the connection... Don't even need this anymore. And then we load these memory settings. And we cross our fingers. That way now have a net gain. Not yet. All right, if this isn't working, we're gonna have to do one more try at something. My main question is, I don't know what the energy cables these RedNet guys are allowed to connect to. Maybe they can't connect to that. So if we did this, hopefully that'll connect. And if it doesn't, then I'll have to do something like a little different. All right, back in a minute. All right, so here's my next plan. You ready for this? I'm gonna get a redstone energy cell. So I don't think we can have cables connect to cables, long story short. Um, so what I'm gonna try here instead is the following. Make me a redstone energy cell. and put it right here. We will have the left be your input. 
we will have the right be your output, and the output will go by way of you. Oh, right, that only can transfers MJ, doesn't it? So that might be part of your problem. So let's do this up there. Let's switch this back to IC2 power. Let me test this a little bit more, I'll be right back. All right, so what I did is I plugged an MFE here as the buffer. That's gonna get filled up with the P2P tunnel, which is getting drained from down here. This is where things get complicated, folks. So you can see the energy loss from MFFSU until the MFE is full, of course. Um, but that's okay, because the MFE can transmit 512 EU per tick, so that's cool. So then we should be able to transmit this RedNet energy cable. We're going to try again to see if it'll plug directly into this guy. If not, I might have to have like a buffer in between with uh, the cell. But if this connects, then we should have a net gain of power. Oh, look at that. Now we're talking. Nice. All right, so it looks like the energy cable here from Mine Factory Loaded cannot directly interact with the cables from IC2, but they can interact with the MFE and the MFSU. Uh, and it also can interact with the cables from uh, thermal expansion. So that's kind of cool. So what we've got here now is we're generating power using a nuclear reactor and we're filling our resonant energy cell with it. And you can see we're having a net gain over a few seconds. So every five seconds we're gaining 80,000 RF instead of losing. So that's kind of good to know. Uh, also, this change will be a nice indication for us just to say, hey, you know, you're still okay with power or now you add some more things to your system, Dyer, you need more power again. Nice. So the RedNet energy cable is doing its job. Uh, the MFE is going to fill up to full because it's receiving more power than it's outputting. Remember, maximum output, 1,000 RF, okay, with your RedNet energy cable. Uh, 1,000 RF equals 250 EU, and the MFE can output more than 250 EU per tick, but it's receiving from the MFSU 2048 EU per tick, so lots, right? So we're getting tons of power from the MFSU. The MFE is going to fill up as a buffer in between. That's fine. That's cool. Not a problem. So power problems for now are solved. All right, now to a task, uh, uh, something along the lines of what I've been meaning to do for a while and kind of been talking about doing, but haven't quite gotten to yet. Dun, dun. Don't mind me, I'm just making a little glass cage. I feel like a glass cage would be cool for this. Don't ask me why. I really don't know. Apparently I need more glass, though. For some reason I got a stack of grass and only half a stack of clear glass because I apparently don't know what I'm doing. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, so next up, we want El Rancho. So that guy can kind of go right here. Uh, with the output side there, we'll have the power line running into here. There you go. And this guy should wind up shearing the sheep. Hooray. Nice. ME interface. There. ME cabling. there and what we should wind up with now is wool that gets dumped straight into the AE network. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna try and get a couple sheep into here. Can't hurt to have a few there, right? And let's go ahead and even go a little crazy. Get a couple wheat and get a third going on. <laughs> All right, so a handful of sheep standing here making wool. I think I could probably get a couple more sheep. There we go. Just a handful of sheep there doing their thing. They should have no problem eating the grass. Oh, right. Grass might not regrow, huh? 
Let's fix that. There we go. So what should happen now is the grass will spread. So there's clear glass on top of this grass on the edge there, and it should spread to the middle blocks, but the sheep won't be able to eat it because it's underneath clear glass. Haha. -ha. And I guess because it's a non-solid block, the uh, grass is allowed to stay there. Unlike when you put like cobblestone on top of it, it like removes the grass and turns it to dirt. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we'll leave those guys for a bit and we will see if we get some wool. I'll keep an eye on my wool supply for a moment here. We have a decent amount, so we have 917 at the moment, but I wanna make sure that we're earning some and then uh, I'll teach my AE system how to convert wool into string. Cool, 917. We'll come back in a few and see if there's any more. All right, guys, so the most efficient way to get uh, string from wool is to throw it in a pulverizer, one to four. So we can put that, one, two, three, four. Encode that up. Now our A system knows all about it. So I should then be able to come over here and tell this guy to keep a handful in here at a time. Maybe a dozen, sounds like a good number put the wool away and then uh, this thing should start pumping out the string in theory and this guy can start operating again oh you know what frame housings not string that's not what goes in here dire derp again uh, where are frame housings untreated frames I was like, why isn't stuff flowing through here yet? I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess. Come on. There you go, three. Cool. So it'll go ahead and craft those up and uh, start populating the frame housings. So obviously, guys, I've swapped out my Diamond Queen here for the Destabilized Queen. And the reason I did that is because I'm getting lots of redstone from this queen. Uh, we have a chance to get electric and occult combs. And as a matter of fact, because those are common producers, uh, the max we can get from those is two per B tick. So you'll notice that we're getting two of those and we're also getting our max of one uh, redstone, which is the specialty of this bee. So we're actually getting quite a bit of combs out of this deal. Um, and from those um, electric comb guys, we're getting pretty much the equivalent of redstone. We're getting destabilized drops. So it's a 22% chance that we get these and we can turn those into redstone if we want, but we're also getting a decent amount of redstone from this bee. So I'm gonna let this guy run for a while and another portable hole mishap we'll wind up getting lots of redstone. So I'm thinking we've got pretty much all our power con uh, problems straightened out. The nuclear reactor is going to definitely help out. And if we really get into a position where we need even more power, oh, look at this, we're maxed out. Nice. So you can see the net change over a period of time is uh, really small or zero, meaning that basically we are not, you know, really changing our energy, right? We're, we're producing more than we're making now. So that's kind of cool. I'm happy about that. I really am. That's awesome. All right, so let's get to work on something new. One of the things I'd like to do, I think, is try and find my way over to the end. Now, I'm going to try my best to not bother the Enderman too much. So far, we've had a little bit of an uneasy peace going on between the two of us. Uh, they've kind of left me alone, and I've pretty much left them alone. So I'm hoping that we can kind of keep it that way. I mean, they have shown their faces every now and then. Let's be honest with ourselves, right? But uh, long story short, I'm hoping that it's just kind of them you know, keeping an eye on things. They haven't really messed with too much stuff. But I would like to get my hands on some end stone. So I look like I could use some blaze rods. You know what I should do? I should a add uh, blazes to this guy. And I think I'm actually going to switch my spawner on, make sure the grinders are running, and get myself some more ender pearls. Because we're actually a little bit low on the ender pearls, as you can see from when I was crafting just then. Yeah, we only have 10 ender pearls left. We definitely have to straighten that up. And hopefully I can get some blazes in here too. Maybe I'll go find a blaze spawner in the nether so I can flip that thing on. Let's get the safari net. Just one of those. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go hunting in the overworld for a stronghold. Now I really have no idea where one might uh, be found in the overworld here. So I'll have to wait for the world to load up a little bit sometimes. 
There we go. So which way to a stronghold? Apparently that way. Okay. That looks good. Okay, looks like I've kind of gotten close. Let's, what say you, head down. And ready to catch yourself, because you might land into some lava here. Dun, dun, dun. Gotta think we're getting close, right? Alright, definitely broke my way into a stronghold here somewhere. So let's see, where are we at? Maybe further down? Well, it seems to kind of be in this direction. This thing points to the portal, right? Alright, where is this thing? Anybody? There it is. <laughs> nice. Thank you, portable hole. You saved me again. All right. So, oh yeah, you know what? I found this thing at one point, didn't I? I think I did. I must have because there's torches here. All right. I guess I found it at one point. All right. So we have a long way to go to filling this thing up. I'm going to need six more of those things. So let's get the coordinates. Let's get ourselves... Let's see. Do I have anything with me that I could maybe make, like, a link book or something with? I have a link book to the overworld, but I don't have an unlinked one, right? All right, let's get away back here. Let's grab our portal gun. And I will meet you guys back at the base. All right, so I'm going to make some link panels here. Um, though I should technically make it straight to the end instead of to where that thing is. So let's do that. Let's get a book to the end. So we're going to want some book stands. Put this guy over here for now. This is going to place as any. All right, you ready? Wait for the world to load. There it is. Cool. All right. You know what? Actually, I will put the book stand here for now. So this can go to age 11. And this will get me back to where the end portal is. Before we do that, I do want to get myself some more blaze rods and get them added to the system. And I also want to show you what I think is going to be a pretty cool feature of the whole mob grinder system. So now we have a direct path to that end portal. Let's find... Where do I have uh, blazes at? Oh yeah, I remember. They should be right around here somewhere. I think it's around this corner. There they are. Nice. So let's find a blaze. Come here, you. Thank you. Back to the base. So if we take a look at the mob selector here, you'll see Blaze is not on the list. How do we get it on the list? It's really quite easy. You place the safari net in the chest. That should really be all you need to do. Um, and then if we go back to main menu and back to mob selector again, it should automatically be there. Blaze, nice. We click the button, now blazes are what's being spawned. It swapped it out. And if we take a look, we should start seeing blazes appear. Haha, <laughs> how cool is that? Nice, right? 
That is awesome. So hopefully I got some ender pearls from that. Yes, we're up to 90 ender pearls now, and we're starting to get blaze rods. Awesome. All right, guys, so here's what I'm thinking. We wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next episode, and we'll venture into the end. I'm going to do my best to not, you know, mess with those endermen too much. I mean, so far, we've been doing all right, but... Uh, we'll see what happens. Hopefully they don't mind me going in there just to grab a bit of endstone because there is something I'd like to play with uh, that does require endstone as a crafting component. For now, Daryl20 signing off. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Our power problems are solved. I'm pretty excited about that. It's very nice to know that I can rest comfortably knowing that we've got all the power we need. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. So not a big deal with our power situation here. We should be pretty much maintaining... Uh, a nice steady amount of power. You can see that we really are not having an issue. Our resonant energy cell is full. And uh, for now, we'll catch you guys next time. All right, guys, take it easy.